Today I'm going to show you a cardigan that you can make for any type of weather because it's got so many so many features that you can choose from and I've chosen a special sleeve just because I wanted to just because I want to be extra and the fabric allowed it bit of a wow print there stay with me hi sewing friends I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com welcome to this channel that is all about sewing limitless sewing and today we are sewing a cardigan it's a really cool cardigan it's a new pattern from Pattern Emporium called the Reconnect Long Line Cardigan it is long line because the style is like that but it's a little different to other ones I've sewn before this one has a V neckline here so it's a quite nice V it's not curved it's meant to cross over in the middle because you can put buttons optional down the front only if you want to you finish all this area with a band it's not a super oversized boxy type of cardigan so here on the upper chest the bust all this area will be nicely fitted but then from the waist down it's a line so it's not straight down that's nice you have a lot of length options here you can make it shorter knee length midi length you can see a lot of cut lines on the pattern and you can choose to hem it normally that would be the typical cardigan you can also add a ruffle to the bottom and if you add this ruffle it can end up being at the knee midi or even super long it just depends on what you want for the sleeves they are sort of a slim fit sleeve and in that type of regular type of sleeve you have two options one that is nicely fitted and I would suggest you use that one if you plan to make this for more hotter weather if you're using a really lightweight knit and you're planning to wear a tank or something sleeveless underneath that type of sleeve won't really allow the space for you to wear something with a sleeve underneath but there's always options for more sleeves there's another sleeve that is similar to the one I've just described only it has a little bit more ease it's still not a big sleeve but it has a bit more space for you to be able to layer anything underneath so if you are using a little bit of a heavier fabric maybe one that doesn't stretch that much maybe that sleeve will be better for you then the other option is a really fabulous puff sleeve <laughs> so that is the option I've chosen just because of my fabric choice I wanted to make something that was going to be super striking with the puff sleeve you have gathers here on the top and then down here it's gathered into a narrow cuff the, it's not a cuff as such it's just a lower end of the sleeve and that reaches sort of up to there there is another little pattern piece for you to make a cap sleeve if you want to make a summer version I wish I'd had time to make that one but I think that is really cute as well so you can go from the full length of sleeves so whatever weather you're in or whatever occasion you need it for you're going to find a sleeve that's going to suit your personality or just the basics you know what you really need for the pockets you have three options one of them is no pockets which is what I've done but I do like the pockets there it's just that I didn't get enough time to make more versions so I could also make those but one of them is really cool and you've seen me sew this before with other styles basically on the front you just cut out the opening you bind that you use a band actually and then your pocket bag is sewn on at the back completely sewn onto the front piece so it's the type of pocket that doesn't move or flop around or give you any bulk at the hips or just hanging there being uncomfortable so definitely I would want to make that pocket when I make another one the other one is a patch pocket and I like it because one of the sides is actually caught into the side seam and then the rest is top stitched on it's also stabilized with interfacing on the top so they are going to look really nice it's going to be a nice neat patch pocket the patch pockets I don't enjoy much at all with knits are the ones that are sort of just stand alone where the whole thing is sewn onto the front they can end up sagging and not looking that neat but just the fact that this one's anchored onto the side seam is going to make it much more stable and neater and bulk free reconnect cardi is designed for neat fabrics I would suggest your first options be the ones that stretch horizontally and vertically those are just going to be more comfortable especially considering that it is sort of fitted up here the armhole or this area I think you would benefit from the fabric stretching vertically you could be a little bit more adventurous and use fabric that stretches horizontally and just has a bit of give vertically maybe that would work also but I would keep it lightweight those fabrics that stretch horizontally and have nothing vertically I would avoid those all the way because you're not going to be too comfortable and you know so many types you can use so many types of neat fabrics I've got a graphic here I can't memorize them all but you can go from very lightweight you can use ITY, double brush poly, single brush poly, rayon model, bamboo, spandex types and then you go off to more medium weight cotton lycra just be careful that it's not too stiff and not too heavy find one that's light to medium weight maybe ponty roma the same i've had all types of ponty roma in my collection some have been really soft and malleable with a bit of drape others have been extremely stiff so just make sure you're avoiding really stiff fabrics for this design it's just not going to look that nice 
Then you can go to sweater knits if you're fancy and have merino or wool types of sweater knit materials that would be amazing. Then you can go off to like lurex and mesh and shiny things. You know, you can use so many types of fabrics. Now the one I ended up choosing is I really like ITY. As some of you know, I live in Brazil. I should be cold right now. This is full on autumn and look at me, I'm in my short sleeves. It's really hot right now. So whenever I want to layer, when it gets a little cool, I want something light on top. And I chose a really striking print from my collection. It's an ITY, you'll see it soon, but oh my gosh, it's just so nice. And I knew I was going to get myself into a little bit of trouble because ITY is not that easy to work with, but I was determined to have the look because of the print. So that's my choice. Now, if I would have had two or three more Karina clones sewing next to me, <laughs> I would have made two more. And I had already chosen the fabrics. One was a really light French terry, baby French terry actually, a blend of rayon and spandex. I'm showing you the fabric right here. And I really wanted to use the wrong side of the fabric on the outside because the texture was so pretty. The color was actually a little darker and a little more interesting than the actual right side of the fabric because that fabric is super drapey and super light. My plan for that fabric was to try the ruffle version with that one. I always wanted to make the ruffle version in a short length, sort of above the knee. That was my goal with the short sleeve. Unfortunately, I could not have time to sew it up. I just, the ITY version took up all of my time and I had no more time anyway. That was what I wanted to do. And the other one was a stretch sort of corduroy. It's sort of like a stretch velvet. It does stretch horizontally and vertically. It's a little heavier. And it's with this one that I wanted to do those pockets that you cut out and then you sew the pocket bag on the back. Lovely green color. I would have loved to have a cardigan in that color because I don't have one. I know I will eventually make it. I, I, I just have the vision of these fabrics in my head. So yeah, I'll eventually make them for sure. Because the Connect Cardigan is a new pattern, it's 15% off. And it's not the only pattern that is 15% off. Kate, who is the owner of Pattern Emporium, always puts a vast array of other patterns that could go with this one. There are quite a lot of dresses that I would have liked to make. The Entice Me dress has a ruched area here. I even have the pattern pieces printed out, it's sort of like a curved dress like this on the front. So you get gathers on only one side. Oh my gosh, that is so pretty. The Palazzo pants, I've already made a video about those. So have a look. I'll leave you a link to the whole sales page, everything that's 15% off, and you can find the link to the Connect Cardigan in there. It is an affiliate link. I do make a small commission from there. Doesn't cost you anything extra but part of the sale comes back to me and that supports the work that I do here. These patterns are 15% off through Monday midday-ish but in Australia. For those of us who are in the other side of the world it's earlier like a lot of hours before sort of Sunday night midnight-ish around there. So make sure you have a look before the sale ends so you can get it for a little bit less. Sizing is in Australian sizing, so don't get confused. Don't think it's the same type of sizing you use in other pattern brands or whatever you buy in the shop. You know, you could be in another country. It is four to 30 Australian sizing. So just look at the size chart and look at your measurements and choose your size. Choose your base size based on what your high bust measures so that your shoulders and all of this area fits really well. And then look down and see if you need to blend out or in for other sizes. If your full bust does not fall into the same size as your high bust, if it's just one size difference, don't worry. If it's two or more sizes difference, then you might need to do a full bust adjustment. In the pattern, you'll find a link that takes you to a tutorial that shows you a really easy full bust adjustment for knit patterns. I have to confess, I've never made a full bust adjustment on knit patterns. <laughs> I just haven't felt the need to. And in my particular case, I've chosen a size 18 and my high bust and full bust fall within the same range of the same size. So in theory, I wouldn't need to do any full bust adjustment. So that is nice. <laughs> Now, if you want to sew the puff sleeve, there is another little table that you can find that will give you this type of measurement here on your forearm because you could have different size arms in relation to your body and this piece here needs to be super nice and fitted so it holds up the gathers from the sleeve nicely. So look at that one. When I measured my forearm, it falls exactly into the same size I'm sewing, which is the 18 Australian. That if you convert to US, is probably a 14 US. It would be an 18 UK also. There is a difference, but it doesn't matter what the numbers are. It, the important thing is that you choose the right one and that it's going to fit you. You have finished lengths and that's how I knew that I wanted mine to be between the knee and the longest version. So I cut right in between those two sort of lines. I customized my length, which meant I had to customize the length of my band as well. I added 12 centimeters to the knee length, which is almost five inches. 
So from the mark of your band, I added the same amount there or on the fold line so that everything would make sense. Otherwise, it's so relaxing to sew pattern emporium patterns because I typically don't need to do any fitting adjustment. The fit is super easy and all I have to do is just cut it out, sew, enjoy, and then just be happy that I've got a really nice garment. For you who might wonder, this is the Carefree Tee, one of the latest pattern emporium makes I made the other day in an embroidered knit. Anyway, it's really nice. I think it's really special. <laughs> For the sewing we're gonna see a lot we're gonna see sort of the whole thing basically maybe I didn't film the hem at the end we're gonna see how to gather traditionally I don't have special notions to do that with clear elastic or things like that but there were quite a few areas to gather here on the sleeve in two areas I'm gonna show you how to put it together and you're just gonna see how much I struggled with my band but it turned out amazing you don't have to choose ITY you can choose something else that's gonna behave nicer and you have a better experience but I know what I'm getting into I know what I'm getting into when I choose these types of fabrics but I just think of the end result and how light and airy and drapey it's gonna be and that's why I think it's worth it you know so let's see These are the main pieces for one of the connect cardigans that I'm making. This is a length between the knee and the midi length. This is the back and it's cut on the fold and you can see how the print of this fabric is going to make it really striking. I'm going to have stripes all along the center right there on the fold. Then there's a little white area and then all that fabulous black and white print. And for the front I've done something similar. I've left the stripes right there in the center. This is the neckline. It has a V neckline as you can see. And then on the sides, it will match this type of print right there. Can't wait to make it. I think it's going to be amazing. On that front edge, you'll see a series of notches that is going to help you put the band there on the center. That's how the neckline is finished right there. I'll take this aside and show you what the puff sleeve looks like. This is how wide the puff sleeve is. You can see the sleeve cap on there is quite wide. It's going to be gathered into the shoulder and I love that. And then this is the cuff, it's long, it's shaped, it'll sit below the elbow right here. It'll be not tight but fitted and then all that excess is going to be gathered into there. I think it's going to look amazing. I didn't do anything special with the print here, I just have the typical black and white print for my fabric because I had to use what was left. And this long, these two long pieces are the bands. Now this is ITY, it's curling like crazy. I've got my work cut out for me. <laughs> I know I'm gonna have to fiddle a lot. There is a center back seam right there and I've got it pinned ready to sew. The band piece is super long. There's no way you could cut it on the fold while keeping the stretch going this way. So you will have a little center back seam but it'll be where your hair is and no one's gonna see it. Because this fabric is so lightweight, I'm not doing any type of pocket here but if I have time to make a second version, I'll do a pocket. I get loads of this ribbon when I buy fabric and I'm gonna use it to stabilize shoulders. I don't wanna use it in the whole width because I wanna keep the layer light. So I'm just gonna trim it in half. I think this is about three quarters of an inch. So I'm basically gonna have a ribbon that's three eighths of an inch now. Here are my shoulders, I've got them pinned and I'm gonna leave that raw edge that I cut right on the raw edge of the fabric. So it will be protected with the serger. I think this ribbon's pretty, it's white, it's a little shiny. It's not gonna look ugly inside, but the important thing is that it doesn't stretch, which means that the shoulders won't stretch and they'll be much more stable to support the weight of the puff sleeves that I'm gonna add here. Whenever I use anything woven, I try to use something really, really light. Like I wouldn't want to use twill tape, for example. That's just too heavy and it's going to make the seam too bulky. That's how it's going to look inside. It's not ugly, it's not bulky and it's super stable and it won't stretch. I'm doing some gathering stitches at the bottom of my puff sleeve because it will be gathered into a cuff. And then I'll do the same on the top on the sleeve cap. There are two notches there that you need to gather. Just a straight stitch with a long stitch length, that's all. And I'm not going to do the gathering stitch all the way to the edge. I'm going to leave about three quarters of an inch free because I don't want to have gathers right up to the edge. This pattern uses a quarter of an inch seam allowance, so I'm doing both gathering stitches quite close to the edge here. In the pattern, you'll find a gathering technique that uses clear elastic, but I don't have that notion, so I just gather old school and it still works out okay. This is a sleeve. It's very wide because there's an area that's gathered. I have the single notch there that will match the sleeve, so a little further, you have a notch there. And then on the other side, the same. I have a pin here, and then the double notch is a little below. So this is the area that needs to be gathered. I'll do the same rows of parallel gathering stitches here from the pin to the pin. Why do I do two rows? I think it's just easier to get 
get a more stable gather and it's just easier to sew onto a piece. have my cuff piece the narrower part is right here on the top that's going to go at my wrist and then the wider part is going to be there on your forearm and right in the middle there's a little mark there's a little notch I can see it clearly there and then this is the bottom of the sleeve I've also put a pin to mark where the center is now basically this needs to be gathered into there and I'm going to do that first once that's gathered and done with then I can go ahead and sew this gathered area onto the main cardigan pieces. So I'm just gonna put the cuff behind so I can work with the gathers in the front, match up these center reference points here. Remember, I sometimes call them notches because that's what everyone calls them, but I don't notch into anything. I just mark a little bit with a pen, that's all. I've pinned the center and now I'm gonna pin the sides. Remember, I haven't gathered all the way to the edge because I don't want gathers right there where the seam is going to be later. I want that edge to be free. And then I'm just going to pull my threads and gather. I like doing it from one edge to the center, from the other edge to the center. I think they're easier to manage that way. You can see all the excess I need to fiddle and gather into here now. So the way I'm gathering here with this ITY is no different to the way I would do it with a woven. It is exactly the same thing. I just pull until the length on the top matches the length I have on the bottom. And I think having the two rows really helps because you get a really nice gather. Here you can see it's all gathered. The gathers are quite dense. This piece is at least double the length of the cuff under this. I'm just going to be careful and serge this together. I am just using a quarter of an inch, which is the seam allowance you get with a serger without trimming anything away. I'm just being careful to keep all the raw edges together and prevent the ITY from curling up underneath. This is how it looks on the other side. Of course, I have to remove that gathering stitch, but doing the two rows keeps the gathers really even. You can see that the seam allowance is sort of right in the middle of where the gathers were. Okay, here I have my front and my back. This is the shoulder seam. I can see my single notch there. I can see my double notch there. And here I have my sleeve. Both are wrong sides up. And here is a single notch for the front as a double notch for the back. So I'm going to match this notch to that notch, this notch to that notch. On the top of the sleeve, you also have a little reference point or notch as you call them. And I'm just going to put a pin there so I can see it. That will match the shoulder seam there. So you can see the amount of excess here that I need to gather in. To do that, I am going to flip this so that I have the sleeve on the top and the armhole on the bottom. Okay, I did my pinning off camera because I find that extremely boring to watch. But here we have the armhole extended underneath. I have the sleeve on top. These are right sides together. I've pinned from the edges up to where the double notch is over here, up to where the single notch is over there. And then you pin further one to one for about one and a half inches until we have our gathering stitches right there. So this is the excess on this side. This is the excess on that side. I've pinned the top of the sleeve to the shoulder seam right there. And then just like I've done with every other gathering you've ever seen, I'm just going to pull these threads here and gather until I have the same length on the sleeve as what I have on the back on the armhole. From one extreme to the center and then from the other extreme to the center. So I'll just finish sorting this out and complete pinning and then we can just sew the sleeve on the flat. Look at all these lovely gathers. It is a pretty short area so it's not going to be as fiddly as when I was sewing the bottom right here to the cuff. So I'll just go ahead and search this, not trimming anything away because the seam allowance is a quarter of an inch. There we go. The same as I did with the other area that I gathered. I'm just going to remove these basting stitches. They are easy to remove. There we go. So nice. It's just a small area right there. It doesn't involve the whole top of the sleeve. And ITY is always going to keep gathers really nice. This is the type of knit I like that's equivalent to a woven style that would be a rayon or a crepe. Just keeping this sort of detail with a light flowy fabric like this. I don't mind sewing sleeves on the flat when it's a really light material like this ITY. So here you can see the seam of the sleeve where the underarm is going to be. And I've matched the seams there. I've matched the seams where this cuff starts and then all along there. So it'll be one continuous seam. I started pinning all the way from the hem of the actual cardigan. This is all the long side seam there. 
it'll be a pretty long seam that I'm just going to serge together. If I was working with a heavier fabric, I wouldn't do the puff sleeve feature. I would just do the regular sleeve. And then I would sew my sleeve and sew my side seam separately, put it inside and sew it on the round. But because this is super lightweight, I don't really mind doing it on the flat this time. Remember when you're sewing these long seams, just let the serger do its thing. Don't stretch out the fabric. Just keep it nice. Don't make any tension to it with your hands as you sew. Here I'm just sewing this tiny little seam with my sewing machine. I'm using a quarter of an inch presser foot because that is the seam allowance. I would rather sew it on the machine so I can have the seam allowance open and not together like it happens with the serger. I find it less bulky. Then at the bottoms on both ends, you just fold it right sides together and sew that little bit at the bottom. Super easy also using a quarter of an inch seam allowance and then you flip it and the bottoms of the bands are done. Look, this fabric is terrible. You can see it curling here. There's no way I can control it with the iron or anything. So I took my time to pin it on the edge all the way along. Like the whole thing has been pinned right on the edge to keep the raw edges together. This is my center bag. That's where I have my seam. A little further, you see another horizontal pin that is going to match the shoulder and this is going to match the shoulder. These are all marks that are on the pattern. You just have to look and see where they are. You can see my little mark there. So I've got them with pins. Down further, you will see another pin that's going to match the V point of the neck line on the front and then down 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 further and then down further there's another mark that's going to be sort of at the midpoint of the center front. Here is my band finished at the bottom like that. You can see the little red mark right there. That is where the band is supposed to reach. Once you've got that pin there, let me remove this one. You need to bring this bottom that's going to be the hem over and wrap it around like this. Hem allowance is four and a half centimeters. That is one and three quarter inches. So just bring it over. Don't pull it. Just bring it over so it can cover it because this is going to be sewn this way like that. When we flip it, it's going to be finished really neatly. And from here up to this notch that you have here, it's actually a double notch on the pattern. It should match one to one, same length. So it's all good. From this notch up to the V point here, it's also supposed to match one to one. It's supposed to have the same length. You're not supposed to stretch the band to fit. It should fit exactly. From the V point to the shoulder, you can see that the band is a little shorter there. You need to stretch it to match there. And then from the shoulder to the center back, you can see you also need to stretch it to match like that. Then from here onwards, it's the same thing. I'm not going to trust pins or anything with this fabric. It's just trying to curl everywhere. So I'm going to give it a hand baste and then serge it. Okay, I've been basting all the way from the bottom and up to the V point of the neckline. It's one to one. But from here up to the shoulder, it's shorter. So I have already stretched my band and divided this small section into four. As you can see, I've got several pins. So basically, I just need to stretch it a little bit as I hand baste so that the top band layer meets the one at the bottom. And I do that as I'm basting. Look, you can see the excess. I stretch it slightly and I hand baste. Next section, you can see there. This is the only way I'm going to be able to keep these three raw edges together right at the edge and keep them from curling because this is what ITY wants to do. This is fiddly but it's going to give me a lot of peace of mind when I actually get to the serger that everything is going to stay in place and not slide around. Okay so this is the section that I needed to stretch a little and you can see how at the back it looks a little wavy. That is the main front, that is my band but when I serge it together I'll just slightly stretch the band a little and it'll be absolutely fine. So that's how I do it when I want to hand baste everything including when I need to stretch areas to fit the neckline and I'll do it the same here on the back. It's a smaller area so it'll be easier. That's basically how I do it. I have a super long seam to sew. Here's the bottom. This is where the hem allowance has been folded over right sides together. Once this is sewn and flipped, it's going to be super neat and the hem will be like that. But that comes later. So for the first section, I'm not stretching. It's all the same. Band and center front should match exactly. The band is narrowish, so you definitely don't want to be trimming anything off when you're serging because the seam allowance is only a quarter of an inch. So I'm just guiding the fabric here. I'm not stretching it or putting any tension on it, just letting the serger do its thing. Now this is the V part of the neckline. Of course, you can't do a sharp V, but you can make this area be as really slight curve here. Make sure you don't get any puckers underneath. 
Okay, and from the V to the shoulder seam, this is where I need to stretch the band slightly to match what's underneath, but I'm only gonna tug gently, just a little bit of tension. Here is the shoulder seam, and then on the back it's the same. You can see it's a little wavy there because the edge of the main cardigan is longer than the band, so I'm just slightly tugging. Here's the other shoulder seam. This is the other center front here where the V is. I'm also tugging slightly here so that everything matches. The only difference here is that I've already basted it. I don't have a loose band that I'm stretching to match. I've already matched it with a hand basting, you know? Here you can see the little red mark where that marks the V in this area. I need to be careful to not get a pucker underneath and do a tiny curve there. And now all the way down is just straight, no tension, no pulling, just Okay, so that's how the bottom looks. Once you flip it, the band is gonna come within these two layers and that's how the hem's gonna be. And all I need to do now is hem and press, but the band is sewn, it's very neat. You can see that this print is gonna contrast the white right there. I'm excited to just get this finished. So the hem here of the bottom piece of the sleeve, I've got it wrong sides out and then I slipped it underneath and that way I can sew it on the round. It's the easiest way to do it with such a tiny, tiny area. I did hand base to keep it in place because the fabric is super slippery. Here it is. I'm so happy with it. So the fabric had a really interesting print. It's all in the same print. So there were areas that had these stripes like this, black, gray and white. So I cut my fronts in a single layer so that they would be identical because the stripes didn't repeat in a way that made any sense on the fabric. So I had to cut them in a single layer, which is fine. I left those stripes there on the, f on the center and then I left a white area there and then the band. The band, I cut it from this area of the print so that it would contrast. I love print blocking when it's the same fabric because you know it's gonna work, but then other people would think you were color blocking, but I'm just using the same fabric, you know? So that, that looks just like I wanted it to. And at the back, I placed this stripey bit right in the center. So I have all the stripe going down. And then on the sides, I have the black and white flowery type of print leaves. I don't know what it is, but it's, it's nice. <laughs> and then I match the sleeves to have this same print. There you can see the gathers on the top. It's not that much. And because the fabric is lightweight, it handles it really well. I'm not gonna look too poofy, you know, it's fine. <laughs> nice and voluminous but very drapey and then here's the bottom end of the sleeve this is the one that needs to be nicely fitted it's just folded up right there it's not a cuff that is double inside or anything it's just like an extension of the bottom of the sleeve which I found super easy to put together because you were able to do all the gathers on the flat so that was nice love that I think it's amazing there's no other fabric I would do the puff sleeve with than ITY for sure I find even rayon spandex would get a little bit bulky. So yeah, I wouldn't choose a heavy weight fabric or unless I really wanted that effect, you know, like I really, really wanted it poofy. I just want the, the gathers to be sort of just gentle, you know, very, very drapey. At the bottom, I have this white area and I didn't want to do the twin needle right up to the edge. I didn't want thread going through the white. So I started where the black is. That's where I started my hem right there. On the back, I have an inch that's not hemmed. I can put my finger in there. Doesn't bother me, but it looks pretty, it looks neat. And I'm really, really careful about those things. It's easy in theory to sew up this cardigan. It wasn't too easy for me just because of the fabric choice. That, that's what I knew I was getting into. Everything was sewn on the serger, which is not typical for me. All I did with the machine was these tiny seams here on the band and here at the bottom where you finish the band. That is the only thing I used my sewing machine for. I've just styled it over a really fitted black dress and red shoes because the Kaidi is a bit extra. Why not just go all the way and be just totally extra <laughs> let's see this is my reconnect cardigan from pattern emporium you can see that the print is pretty striking here it is a really floaty ity and i placed the pattern pieces so that i would have those stripes going down the center front and then i have the same sort of stripes going down the center back and then i have the black and white flower print on the sides i had a lot of fun doing that my length is between the knee and the midi i can wear this with any color underneath but i just have a simple black dress I really love how floaty and light this is and it's really appropriate for the weather here in Brazil. The way the band is finished at the bottom with the hem is really neat. I really like how that's put together. Here you can see the top part that the band sort of 
contrast the print same fabric though and there's a stripes puff sleeve right there because the fabric is so light it's not really that voluminous but it is pretty out there it is pretty striking look I find I love that stripe on the back there I'm just showing off my puff sleeves they just feel so amazing on here's a closer look at the band I struggled a lot with ITY but I knew what I was getting into you can see the lower part of the sleeve is narrow and it's gathered there on that side and on the top and there's no other fabric I would use for this feature because I don't really want the volume to be excessive I think this fabric tolerates it really well I have a simple band here but you can interface this one partially and add on how many buttons you want I think it's a statement type of topper right here really love it I can't wait to wear it out I think this would be an amazing beach or pool cover-up as well if I don't want to get my arms all burnt and things. I do like wearing long sleeves and this fabric is lightweight, not going to make me hot. I think it would be great. I could throw it over some pants, you know, I could style it so many ways. I just choose to dress up when I'm on YouTube because I just like it, you know. I think it's what you expect from me anyway. And I just like pulling out my shoes and just, just getting dressed up. I like it. Of course, you can wear it more casually as well. Don't forget that Reconnect Cardigan is on sale until Monday, but in Australia, roughly sunday midnight in if you're in this area of the world i'll leave all the correct information down below so you know i'm just really really frustrated that i didn't have enough hours to make more this version took me so many hours to sew it just killed all my chances of making another one but oh well you know we all have 24 hours i wish i had 48 or a couple more of me to like help me sew because yeah it takes a while everything i do takes a really long time but that's fine i'm still happy i was able to share this this is a really special one for me maybe it can give you some inspiration i know what i did was not for everyone but the cardigan has so many options that you can make it a little bit more subdued if you want also <laughs> go have a look at the website i hope this sewing tutorial was helpful and i will see you again very soon bye Can I